Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for April 23. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video, I already covered the best free new assets, and next one, I'll cover top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the assets in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code Monkey10 to get 10% off your order. This video is sponsored by Game Dev Guild. This is a five-day online game dev conference specifically tailored for Unity devs and focused on giving you practical, actionable, usable advice. Watch over 35 talks from industry experts, including Unity CEO John Riccatello, Jason Wyman, Thomas Brush, Lana Lux, Turbo Mix Games, and many more. Join the virtual expo hall where you can walk around, visit booths, and network with people using the integrated proximity chat. The ticket also includes over $2,000 worth of free bonuses, including some very useful assets and some subscriptions to tools like Unity Pro and JetBrains Writer. And there's also a free one day pass, which includes free access to all the sessions from the first day. It starts on May 1st until the 5th. So if you want to improve your Unity game dev skills, check it out with the link in the description and use the coupon code MONKEY20 to get a nice 20% discount. Alright, so starting off with a really impressive rope tool. It looks extremely natural, very impressive. The ropes can sway back and forth, they are connected in various ways. You can connect ropes to other ropes, you can push them around, you can modify the mesh to simulate some chains, you can even drag some objects with ropes, attach them to an object and even bend it. So really it has tons of possibility. Adding something like this really helps the game feel much more natural. Adding these kinds of tiny physics always makes it look great. It runs on your GPU, so it's extremely performant, allowing you to have tons and tons of ropes in your game. Next up, we have a fun one. It's a volumetric heat map. You define a volume and size it. Then you can add data at any point inside that volume and easily visualize it in multiple ways. The data is just a simple list of vector 3, which you can populate in any way you want. So perhaps it's your player's movement pattern. Perhaps it's in a list of where the players died. Maybe where some coins were either spent or acquired. It's a really nice data visualization tool, which could definitely help you as a developer in order to analyze some gameplay. Or you could include it in your game so your players can visualize their own data and learn how to play better. Then here we have a nice enemy AI system, perfect for any kind of stealth game. You define the enemy patrol areas. You can throw things to distract some guards. They will walk there and and go into an alert state. It features a cover system where enemies will not see you if behind cover, then over time their alert level goes down, although if you do get spotted they start shooting, other enemies can listen to the shooting and attack the player. So I could see this as being an excellent starting point if you want to build a nice stealth game, kind of like Splinter Cell. Up next here is an interesting tool that can be very useful if you use any external assets. It's a mesh extractor, so you can grab any assets you have, maybe from an asset pack, then you can click to select only the parts of that asset that you want, and you can extract them onto their own separate mesh. It definitely looks like a very useful tool. I've needed to do this exact thing a bunch of times, and the only way that I knew how to do that was using ProBuilder. However, ProBuilder, the cut tool, is quite a bit janky. It always has some issues, whereas this one seems to work perfectly in every scenario. You can extract the mesh, position the pivot, extract the textures, and export it as an OBJ. Definitely a very useful tool to have in your toolbox. Up next is another very useful tool. This one is for painting meshes. So you pick up a mesh, any mesh, then you can simply use the mouse to select individual polygons and paint them with a different material. This can be especially useful if you like using a low poly style just like I do. It works great for selecting each individual polygon and painting them in any way. It works on static meshes as well as on skin meshes. So for example, if you have some character and you want to change the visual without changing the entire material, then with this you can just select the parts you want and color them differently. It's simple and does exactly what you want. Next up, if you want to make some node-based visuals, check out this one. It helps you create your own node-based elements during runtime. So this one is not an editor tool for making nodes, rather it works in-game. So perhaps you could use it for drawing something like a circuit board or maybe some waypoints. Maybe you could include it in your game with some kind of modding tools to allow the player to create some custom AI or something. You can click and drag to move some nodes, add or remove some connections, define input and output points, and visually it looks really nice with some animated arrows and dynamic shapes. And the nodes themselves, you can also change the visual, so they can be just squares or really any visual you want. Definitely a very interesting tool. Then if you want to generate a ton of trees, look at this one. It features a ton of generation settings, all of them based on sliders or curves, which makes it really easy to quickly iterate. The results are certainly very unique lots of different types that you can create. If you need even more control, you can also modify the actual tree mesh itself. It includes some animated shaders so the trees can move with the wind and also includes a placement tool.
tool, so you can define some settings to generate something and then easily place hundreds of them in the world. Up next we have a nice flocking algorithm. You can spawn some objects and watch as they flock together and move around. Now these objects can be whatever you want, so perhaps they are birds flying around or maybe fish swimming. They flock around in a nice satisfying manner. There is a CPU and a GPU implementation, works on both 2D and 3D. And then if you have some performance issues with your game, you should probably be using LEDs. If you don't want to build them yourself, then this tool for generating them in runtime can definitely help. The generation is extremely seamless, I cannot notice when they swap at all. It works on both static as well as skin meshes. It's super easy to use, just drop a script on your object and that's it. It uses a native library for mesh generation, so it's all super fast. Then here is a very interesting one that could definitely be very useful. It helps you easily add tabs for just about anything. You can make a tab for a specific game object or a certain folder. You can create new tabs, shift between them or close them. It's a simple tool that does exactly what you expect. Alright, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on DNT Asset Store for April 23. There's links all in the description and as a bonus you can use the coupon code monkey 10 to get 10% off your order. Also check out my own free and paid assets on the store. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.